Harris here with the world famous Moto Harris in studio. And right to my right, I got the second world famous Deer on Moss. You guys know I'm at the track of T out there normally taking the most sickest photos of the day, getting the hottest shots. The ones that I really like, they're on with the dirt coming behind it. Oh, you know, the ones that melt my heart. I get dirty for you. You do get dirty for me. I always post them up that way, bro. Yes. Welcome to the show, everybody online. It's going to be a great, great show tonight that we got going on here. Uh, we are going to have a call-in guest coming on very, very shortly. So as soon as he gets on the phone, we'll, uh, we'll really kick this thing off. But we just wanted to say Happy New Year's. Hope you guys had a great Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Did you have a good Christmas, Moto? Yeah. Yeah, what would you get, bud? A new Strider. New Strider. A lot of people that's been at the track probably already seen that. Been ripping around, having a good time. Yeah. All right. How about your New Year's? Have a good New Year's? Yep. T, what about you, buddy? Fantastic Christmas with the family. We couldn't got any better. Uh, New Year's low-key. Actually went to sleep at 11 o'clock, got up early the next morning, took photos in the crazy weather. You got to love it. You got to love it. Well, welcome everybody live on our Facebook. Don't forget to uh, make sure you like it, share it. Let's uh, get this thing. I know it's going to be a um, pretty crazy night because we've been off for a long time. Uh, we took a little break, as most of you guys know, but there was no, um, no races, so it gave us an opportunity to take a nice breather, step back, relax, spend some quality time. As you guys see, I got my, uh, my son, Moto Harris, here in the studio with me. I also got my beautiful wife. She's behind the scenes, Tawny, over there. And I got to give a big shout out to Big Deal Production, as always. Open up the studio, letting me come in and do my thing in here and uh, giving me the best support money could buy. So, um, big deal, guys. We thank you. Glad to be back in the studio. I'm telling you right now, it has been awesome. You can say hi to old 88, Marshall Race. Marshall Race, what up, brother? Doing his thing out there. Yeah. My phone is blowing up, but that's good. I just got to tell you guys, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. It's um, not being on the show. It sucked, but it did give me a breather, and I do appreciate all the text messages, emails, uh, messages that you guys sent me requesting the show to come back on. It has been a great time, and uh, overwhelmingly surprising how much you guys really enjoy this show. Uh, it surprised me a lot. I don't really understand why you guys would want to listen to me ramble or talk, but hell, here we are again, 2018, another series. What is this, three years? Yeah, but you do a great job of rambling. Yeah, this, uh, I think you really do. I ramble. You do, uh, yeah. I'm a rambling man. I know. Absolutely. And we wonder where Moto gets it from. Where do you like to talk from? Burn. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you getting quiet all of a sudden? Boy? We do got to give a shout out to Bobby Williams on here. Bobby Williams, a big supporter of the Harris family. Um, hooking Moto's PW up with that Pro Action suspension. Getting ready to get my Daytona bike dialed in. So, uh, I think he did some work on your bike, right? Yeah, he did. Ah, oh, shit. We got a, uh, a trio up here of Pro Action suspension out of Florida. Bobby Williams doing the best out there on the suspension. Domus all in. So, um, welcome to the show, man. We got a lot to talk about. We got to cover all the preseason 2018. We're going to talk a lot about the new numbers coming out because Moto, you may have known your favorite rider's number, but it may have changed. Uh, you know the way with our sport. Raymond Burr jumping on. We see you. What's up, Raymond? Um, we're also going to talk a lot about a winter series that is launched here in the state of Florida. Going OG, and what I mean, we're bringing old school back to Florida. We're bringing the real winter series. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a lot about that coming up. Poi Dog, my boy from NDA, yeah. in the house. I caught one of your shows the other day, Poi. It was very good, as always. Um, we got to talk about the 2017 offseason. Does that give us a preview into what we will see in 2018, or is it just hearsay of what happens over in Australia and the rest of the, the world? Alex, done by down there in southwest Florida. We see you in the house. We're going to talk about the Monster Energy new Supercross format. Yeah. Yep. Also, how about the Fantasy? Yep. And then, big shout out to the Moto Raffle. Moto Raffle coming on board with us this year. If you guys like raffling, make sure you check it out. The Moto Raffle is the place to get all your hottest gear for pennies on the dollar. Sometimes, for I mean... Ten dollars gets you a best thing going out. Brand there. new dirt bike. That's like I told you the other day. Woo. Great idea. Woo! Deal of the century. Thanks, boy dog. We are stoked to be back. It's been a while, but uh, yeah, things are going good, and we are back kicking live in in action. So we got just so much to cover. Um, you know, as as we get ready for our phone call, we're gonna jump in. I want to tell you a little bit about what we did this past week. And we were down in Orlando, and Max. Some of you guys may have uh, heard of this track, formerly known as Bithflow. 
Dias family took over and they've uh, turned this thing around and really did a phenomenal job. Moto, what do you think of Orlando? Good. Yeah, what's your favorite part of the track? Um, my favorite part on the PB track is the long straightaway. The long straightaway in the back? Yeah, you like trying to scrub it over those bumps, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, me and Jack were on the PB track um, yesterday and yesterday we... Um, me and Papa Rufus going to um, the hay bale, so I went on the scooter with me and Jack and me, and we went in the long way. We got to the last bump. We just we just jumped it, and we almost died. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brian, are you watching it live over there? I am. Raymond says keeps buffering. We don't know if it's his signal or is our signal. To signal. Raymond, move into your different area. BBT MX on there. BBT, right, I hope you are up? in the garage working. Teresa. Getting Big Deal's bike done as we are sitting here doing this show. <laughs> you better be. Teresa Deer from Orlando Mex. Soon, Marshall. Flagger Lady, what does Marshall Race say? We got to get T Moss <laughs> to line up. Yes, coming soon. Video's good for me. Hey, Mama Ruthless right there. Woo! She just said Papa Ruthless does some moto. If you guys got any questions, uh, any comments, anything you want to talk about, post them up. We'll see them. We got people monitoring them. And then to give us something to talk about as you guys start building, we got FMG in the house, Florida Motocross Group. Yeah. I don't know if that's Andrew on there or uh, is it J Jason, right? Andrew or Jason, I believe. Which one um, of you guys is it? Flag us up. Let us know. Yeah, absolutely. In the comments. Put it in the comments, he says, down below. All right, so uh, as we get ready for this phone call to come in, I want to just drop some stuff, and we're going to talk more about this in a little bit. But if you weren't at Orlando MX, the Florida Winter Series, brought to you by the Diaz family. So the Florida Motocross Group uh, has created another series in Florida, really to give the riders another outlet to race. Not only did they just say, hey, we're going to put together five tracks and we're going to go racing, they stepped it up, T. Moto, here's what they did. They opened up their wallets. They said, let's put back into the sport. You come race with us. We're going to pay $2,000 to an A and B open class. $2,000. Now here's the kicker. They didn't just go to an A class and take the money away from the A class. Nope. This is added money. So the, the 250, 450 A class still pays 100% payback. So you guys that are fast riders, I'm talking about, could make a paycheck. And we're going to break down the racing. Uh, but I'll tell you, a few guys made some money this weekend. Michael Clark, um, Tristan Lightning Lane. Woo! Noah, what's up, buddy? Good to see Ooh, you on. Bernie. Oh. Got Big Dean. Yeah. Big Dean. We were Double D. We were just talking about the Dean Diaz family right there in the winter series. Now, Dean, you're gonna have to stay tuned because we're only dropping teasers about all the money that you're giving out. Tristan Lightning Lane, Michael Clark, some big winners of the past series. But it is gonna be a six-round race, folks. It started at Orlando Mex, and if you miss the first round, it doesn't matter. You can jump on board. Second round at Waldo. Third round is gonna be at WW. Fourth round, right there in Green Coast Springs at Bostwick Creek. The, or excuse me, the fourth round is going to be at Reddick Motocross Park. Yeah. Fifth round, Bosswood Creek. Sixth round, right back to Orlando MX. Mike Gresh from Trackside Treats. One, two, three. Do you know who Mike Gresh is? Who? Um. <laughs> his, his daughter's number is 321. Nevaeh. Nevaeh, and who else? Um, Zoe. Nevaeh and Zoe? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's Mike's daughter's. I know. Oh, you know now? <laughs> well, it's actually on, one, two, three. One, two, three. Three, two, one? Yeah. It's three, two, one, fool. Oh, one and two and three. Travis, welcome aboard. You guys tuned into the first 2018 Supercross preview show, the Moto Stop Show, along with me, as you guys know, Moto Harris, Theron Moss, as well as we're going to have a guest calling guy to give us some inside uh, look to some... Um, what we to expect here in the 2018. We were just giving a little hint right there about the Florida Winter Motocross Series, the original OG, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit because most people don't know the history of Florida Motocross. I'm going to give you some knowledge. I'm going to lay it down on you guys tonight. You're going to get pass it on? Oh, we're going to pass it on. Shooter. <laughs> hey, David Shooter Brown. Hey, also a little 
snip bit of what's going to come to the 2018 local racing. Um, the Florida, Georgia, Florida Motocross Series has been working together for about two years now, going very successful. We've reached out, we stepped up. There's going to be another group coming in, another series to make things work a little better. That's all coming up in tonight's show. So you guys t stay tuned and uh, put your comments down there. Let us know what you want to talk about. The how the hell you been? Photography going good? Yes, excellent. Uh, staying super busy. Yeah? Ready for the season to start back up, though, so I can get out there and get, snap some photos of the boys. I'll tell you what. We need to get a photographer out there because our big deal boys done ran off and left. Well, you know how they, they are. They went to the pavement. <laughs> they, it, what can you we say? Once. They went One and started time. shooting some street bikes. You guys think street bikes are cool? Hey, if you like dirt bikes better than street bikes, hit the like button right now. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. A bunch of thumbs up. Tell them to pound it, Moto. Yeah. Pound it up <laughs> right there. All right. Well, if uh, if our phone call would call in, we could start our show. I'm trying to keep it a surprise for you. So I'm going to get the paper I got. Um, you got that paper? Can you grab those paper for me too? Team Jeffrey's in the house. Chris Jeffrey says, hello, Moto. Hi. He probably goes, hello, Moto. That's only on my, my dad's black phone. I don't know that hello. That should make a great commercial. Yeah. What? Hello, Moto. It does. Is it a commercial out there? Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, damn, T. Alright. <laughs> yeah, be a smart boy. Since he's slacking, we will uh we'll go ahead and call him up so we can kick this 2000, the first show of 2018 off. Damn, Raymond Burr's watching. Raymond Burr is on. Yeah. When are you guys headed this way? <laughs> By this way, Alex, if you mean you're getting in your Hello? car. Hello? Is this the world famous Dean Diaz Jr.? The third or sorry, not Junior. The uh, third? I don't know if I'd say I don't know if I'd say world famous. Okay, how about Orlando Famous? Orlando Famous, that's fair. All right. Hey, you guys on Facebook, can you hear Dean good enough on the speaker? Let us know. Give us a thumbs up if you can, or somebody give us a comment if you can hear him. We might have to pick the speaker up and put it on a stool right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yep. Matthew Brown. We got some hearts. We got some thumbs up. All right, Dean, they can hear you. Welcome to the Moto Stop Show. Now that we got the posse, Dean... Dean on via phone, in studio with us, we got Theron Moss, uh, better known as T at the Tracks. Right to my left, we got Moto Harris. You may have heard of these guys. Dean, how the hell you been? I've been all right, man. I'm actually uh, hanging out over here at the Yinster's house, playing a little bit of poker with the boys that I train with. Oh, yeah? Are you taking their money? I'm trying to. If you need assistance, let me know. I love some poker. I'll have to go meet up at Daytona sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Dean, what we got on the agenda to talk about tonight a little bit, I wanted to run by the first off. We, we started talking about it before you got on. The Winter Series going down in Florida. It just went down in Orlando. You got to call all the action all day long on Sunday. First of all, take, even though it's, you know, owned by your family, take that out. Tell me about the race in action because I thought it was some of the hottest racing we have seen in a long time. What was your thoughts on the, the weekend? Yeah, man, the racing was definitely awesome. I, I couldn't really... As for anything else, the, between the 125 class, 125 open class, super mini class, some of those 85 classes, man, we had like a three to five way battle almost every moto. It was super intense. It was insane. Big Money, as I mentioned, a six round series starting at Orlando, going to end up at Orlando and hitting the top tracks in the state of Florida, including WW, Bostwick Creek, Waldo, Reddick, and Orlando again. $2,000 open A and B purse. Orlando threw up five hundred dollars for a one twenty-five class. Not only did they throw up five hundred dollars, do you know how much money they gave away at the the riders meeting? Oh yeah, well we actually doubled that five hundred as well. That first round was a thousand, and I heard um, John at Waldo, he's going to double up his his money too, make a thousand dollars for that one twenty-five open class. You guys are doubling down one thousand dollars. So what you're telling me is you're giving up three grand right off the rip for open A and B, so you don't have to be a pro to win this. A and B riders, as well as anybody on a 125, could come out and make some bank. Yes, sir. Got Woo! it. I love it. That's a series giving back. You think so, Moto? Yep. I love it. <laughs> oh, and I also got some great news, too. Um, the Supercross stepped up, and at the last round in Orlando, we're going to have either a 
I think we'll probably get raffle off two four packs. You don't have to like win a race or anything to get it. You can just uh, win that raffle, so that's pretty cool as well. Tampa Supercross is going to be uh, tickets given away at the last round of Orlando. You say? Yes, sir. Ah, I just might have to win me one of those. Hey, uh, you need one? Moto says he needs one. I think you already oh, got Moto, your we'll ticket. Hook you up. Yeah, I think you do. No. I'm pretty sure you do. No, you. You were the first one who got it. Yeah, but I think I got all of us tickets. No, you did not. Oh, sorry. Okay, Dean, he's going to need a ticket because my ticket's not good enough for him. <laughs> all right, sounds like a plan. Got to race. Hopefully those lungs will clear out. Yeah. Um, Alex says that's a lot of lettuce. That is Brian Douglas on here um, as well behind the scenes giving us some love. Dude, I got to tell you that, like we said, right, honestly, all bullshit aside, the race in action at uh, Orlando MX this weekend was bar none some of the best I've seen in the state of Florida. Uh, even going back to the MXGP, I mean, just the going to that $2,000 open A and B class, Austin Winslow, Tristan Lighton Lane, and Michael Clark up there throwing down, all letting it out. And then we had an old guy out there. I don't know who that was in fourth place. You ever heard of that guy? Yeah, I've heard him around. Some, some call him the bar man, Barry Carston. Oh, Barry Carston. Age 51 out there tearing it up with them little guys. I think he's 53. It might be. I don't know. I think we were talking about him a little earlier. He's somewhere around there. 53 years old. Somewhere He's over 50, okay? But racing, got fourth place, and not by luck in the open A and B class. The guy was on fire. He, he's smooth. Yeah, he? in, in fourth place, you're taking home some pretty good money with that purse. Yeah, damn right. And you know, if there's money to be made, Barry Carson's going to be there. Yes, sir. Plus, he loves the sand. He does. Dean, how much time you got, buddy? Are you, you busy? You got to go or you got to hang out with us for a little bit? Uh, they're pausing right now, so I mean, I got about 10 minutes or so. All right. Um, I do want to get on here because we're going to, as we did last year in 2017, big shout out to Damian Plotz, gave us the, the tech tip, the riding tip of the week. Uh, moving forward in 2018, the Die 55 Racing Development Program is on board with the Motostop Show, bringing us a riding tip of some sort every week. And, uh, so just a little, don't think you're going to become a pro just off what you're going to hear, but it's just going to be some of the knowledge that Dean Dias III can give to you, your son, your daughter. If you're a parent, a grandparent, it doesn't matter. Just becoming more safer on a bike. I've said it a hundred times. When you go riding and take uh, a training class from any trainer, there, there's different levels of trainers, some better than, than others, but any trainer, it's going to make you better and safer on a bike. I, I hands down believe that. Now, if you want to progress and win titles, as most people do, or you just want to get better on a bike, you can choose somebody as Dean Dias to die 55 and, you know, get better. He's helped my son Moto get a little faster, so uh, we look forward to that. Dean, walk us through a little bit of what you're doing out there with your uh, the Die 55 racing program in 2018. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I've uh, actually been teaching and training for about 10 years now. Of course, I took motocross to a good amateur level and did pro for a couple of years and had some injuries, so I started giving the kids what I have and trying to push them forward and get them to get in the top ranks, win some championships. And uh, we've just been working everything, working on the edges, as I believe. I treat it like a puzzle. My ride is like a puzzle. You just go around the edges, and eventually you'll fill that whole puzzle up, and you'll have a champion. Well, that's a different way to look at it. I actually never heard that, but it makes perfectly good sense. And um, the, the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. The cream rises to the top. Uh, as we've seen multiple, multiple times, I, I bet if I asked you on the spot how many titles you have with your riders, you couldn't even tell me. Um, but that's okay because we know it's that many that you've lost track. So I, I can appreciate that. <laughs> well, I can tell you that last year we won four major titles with Loretta's and Minio's, so that's pretty impressive. And that's just last year? Yes, sir. Love it. I love it. Well, you got to – do you have a riding tip? I know I'm putting you on the spot, but – you got something for us this week? What do you think? Yeah, I thought about this a little bit, and um, I decided to start from the ground up. Of course, we're going to start with the balls of the feet. You hear people talk about it all the time, riding your toes, riding the balls of your feet. And first off, foremost, the balls of your feet are the balls of your feet, not the ball of your foot. When some people say ball of your foot, they think the heel. I'm talking about um, underneath your toes, those ball joints that hook to your foot. That's where you want to ride the bike. And you also want to po point those toes in towards the bike. So if you go to bend your knees or squat or, like I do, say go into the poop poop position, you can't really go into the poop position because your knees really grasp a hold of the tank and that will allow the bike to, the suspension to work underneath you rather than you flopping around like a jellyfish. 
Absolutely. And uh, there's a gentleman on here by the name of Raymond Burr. He's, he's live on our Facebook uh, video. We, we talked about this this weekend. He was asking you know, little tech tips on the track. And I just said, pick your boot up. And that's one way I've always told everybody, Dean and I, I'm probably the biggest abuser of it all. So once again, if you ever watch me ride, I don't know anybody would because it just laughed. It would, be, it would be good comedy watching me ride. But I don't ride in the proper way, um, probably why I don't go fast. But I just picked Raymond's boot up and the bottom, you know, right before his, uh, the, the hill of it was wore out. And I said, that's where you got to learn how to get on the balls of your feet. And yeah, he's right, on his, he's right on his arches. And another thing, too, when you go into the corner, you use the back brake, you shift, whatever you do, you always come back to the ball of your foot. That way you don't hit false neutral, and that way you don't drag the back brake through the corner. Most people, the favorite way to corner is to the left, not to the right, and that is because of the brake. You can ride your brake all the way through a left-hand corner, and unfortunately you got to put that leg up into a right-hand corner. And off, more often than not, you'll see people wait till halfway in the corner to even put the leg out because they're mashing on the brake into the corner. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, right there, folks, that's been the Die 55 riding tip of the week. Make sure you tune in every week. Uh, Dean Dias will have a new tip for you. And uh, as well, you'll see him at the track with all his racers getting ready for all the big events coming up, including the Florida Winter Series that you don't want to miss out on. Die 55, I believe it is Moto S Dean Dias Moto 733 on... Instagram, is that right? At die55, D-Y-E-5-5. And I um, also want to let you guys know, not this weekend at Waldo. Well, actually, this week at Waldo, this Thursday, I'll be up there training from uh, about noon to 4. But um, I'm going to miss this Saturday. But every other race in the series, I'm going to be there Saturday. If you guys need any help, have any questions about the track or any kind of technique or anything, I'll be around. That's awesome. So this Thursday, you will be at Waldo. So say yes, somebody goes I'm going to try to make it to every, track, every Thursday before the race weekend. Uh, I'm not sure about Reddick. I don't think Carol will be able to open the doors for me, but every other track, I believe I'll be up there on the Thursday before. What? 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 Carol's not going to open the door for you, Dean? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really talked to her about it yet. Oh, Morty. Uh, yeah, I, CB. You never know. Honestly, you never know. And she that could very true. well be like, yes, and, and hook you up. I think it's pretty cool because not only can you educate kids, you know, there at that track, but you can also make them faster and get ready to uh, ready to race. And the results could show right there, reflect, and the, the weekend's race results. So Yeah, I'm only working on trademarking safer, faster, funner. The safer you feel, the more confident you are, the more confident you are, the faster you'll go. I love it. Beautiful. Well, before you jump off, let's talk a little bit about 2018, the big boys out there, the Monster Energy Supercross. Um, what's your thoughts? What's your concerns? What do you see happening, unfolding in 2018 season? Um, we'll start with the big bikes. You know, Kenny. Kenny's hungry. Everybody's pulling for Kenny. But we've seen Kenny hungry before, and it ended up, ended up going very well. And I'm guessing, I mean, I know he's in great shape, but with that injury and stuff, I'm not sure if he's in as great shape when he came in hot time and time again before. So um, it's hard to, hard to take away from Marlon Muscan, man. He's so level-headed, such a good rider. And I hope to see one of the rookies, you know, step it on up. But, man, I, I think I'd have to put my money on Muscan. You know, I'm not my personal favorite. He's not my personal favorite, but I can't put anything against him. Okay. So I, I guess first question is, does Ken Roxon show up to the press conference in a suit like he did last year? I'd imagine, yeah. It's not something flashier, like a little bit of Elvis. Dude pulls up in the Lambo and does a burnout out front and then just flicks him off and walks away. <laughs> that would be Rock's oh, status. That would just be beautiful. I love it. Um, Ken Rock and definitely a mic dropper. Yeah. So it, there is a lot of unknowns. It, it is going to be a a big shock to see what happens with Ken Rockson coming out. As you guys probably know, Ken Rockson got hurt. Um, in the 2017 series, early rounds, and I think up to about 18 or 19, and that's just going off the top of my head, surgeries on one of his arms, on his uh, right arm, I believe it is. So a lot of damage, a lot to come back from, from that. He's probably still one of the favorites, but I think you got to go with consistency, as you said, Marvin Muskan. But what about Eli Tomac? And everybody knows I'm an Eli Tomac fan. Moto, who do you like? Eli Tomac. So, Moto's an Eli Tomac fan, too. I don't really know where he gets it, but 
whatever. You can't hate him, hate the kid. Um, well, I mean, so we're giving it to Marvin Muskin. You know, Eli Tomac finished about 40, 50 points ahead of Marvin Muskin last year. That's pretty cool. So would he not be the second favorite to win? Um, I'd imagine he would be. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of new kids in the in the running for sure. So Jason Anderson out there, Marvin Muskan, Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, um, Justin Barsha. You can say it. Justin Barsha. So only about three or four I could see winning right off the rip at Anaheim won. I, I think it would be hard to say any of the other, you know, could win. I don't think Justin Barsh is ready to to win. Um, um, let me uh, let me go to the Twitter table real quick and see what these guys say. Who's nope. in the four fifty first round? Muskan, Muskan, Brandon, Muskan. Wow. Tomat, Muskan, definitely a favorite. We only have one guy say Tomat. Okay, well hold on, hold on. He's an ex, he's an ex Kawasaki rider, so I imagine that's oh, why. Yeah. Wait, so who do we have on the around the table? Um, we have Chase Mata. Okay, Julio he rides a Barrera. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Chase Mata rides a KTM. Panama, Ryder Glenn <laughs> and Tommy. Tommy Ferracci. What does Tommy ride? Tommy rides a uh, KTM. Oh, <laughs> go figure. Mm. I see. Yay! I see a pattern there. KTM lovers. <laughs> I had a couple of Husky kids here too. Though. He said Muskan. Well, I mean, yeah, because they're so much different. But not to knock them, I, Marvin Muskan definitely a top favorite. I see. Honestly, right now. It is probably a 33, 33, 33% chance that Marvin Muskin could come out and win, and it would not shock me by one bit. Eli Tomac could come out and win, and I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, Ken Roxon could come out and win, and I still wouldn't be shocked. You know, I mean, I think that's the level coming in with the unknowns. Off-season races, Dean. Do you follow off-season races, and do they mean anything to you? Say Australia Open, um, Bercy, anything like that. No, they don't really mean anything to me because, I mean, they are super cost races, but they're not like the super cost we have here in America. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of the same way. I don't take anything from them. Um, I feel like, you know, Anaheim won. That's where all the, the prestige is laying right there. And that's where they come, the nerves start to really start to boil. And mistakes are made right there. A lot of times the winner of Anaheim won doesn't go around to win the series. But... I think 2018, we got a pretty good series unfolding in front of us. Definitely. It's going to be like Orlando last weekend, man. Absolutely. Dude, what a series that unfolded right there. I can't wait to see all the, the next series come, to come. All right, 250 class. Tell me what you guys think of the 250 class. Um, I mean, West Coast is on top. I haven't really got in there and seen who's riding West Coast and who's riding East Coast. But uh, I was, I'm always been a fan of Justin Hill, you know. I knew his brother Josh Hill. I got to see Justin growing up. And now he's on a Suzuki, so, you know, that's the man I'm pulling for. Justin Hill's going to be West Coast. He's going to have Adam Cincerella out there. Um, Adam, I believe Adam will do well. Um, I hope he's in practice on a lot of hard, dry tracks, folks. So West Coast is definitely just from the East Coast dirt. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to catch up. There is a lot of comments coming in um, on our Facebook, and we appreciate all of them. And we don't get to your question. We will kind of scroll back and go through it. I just want to catch up with Dean. It's been a long time since I talked to him, and i got to catch up with the, yeah. with the young kid out there, you know? The legend. He <laughs> is a legend. There's no doubt about it. Good God. He is a superstar in my mind, and that's all that matters. Yeah, he's always nice to me, and that's that's the best thing I like. That's kind of hard, isn't it, Dean? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> kind of hard being nice to me, isn't it? No, not at all. <laughs> Just mess with everybody equally. Yeah, I know. So... All right, last, last question, and uh, Dean Diaz says Kissimmee Motorsports for Malcolm Stewart. That's big Dean on there. Um, so last question for you, little Dean, before I let you go. What do you think of James Stewart's new ride? Well, I've, I've tried looking it up. I've heard rumors. What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I was just trying to start some bullshit. I don't think there I heard he's any... riding a 125 in the, first, the opening round. No, you know what I seriously heard? James Stewart will be at Waldo Motorsports Park this weekend racing a 125 trying to get some money. 
Here we go. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. RJ Hampshire might be there too. Um, I'm just telling you what. All the pros will be at, at Waldo Motorsports this weekend trying to make, win some of that Dean Dyes money. So, local boys, you might as well just pack up and head out there as well and uh, have a good time with everybody. All right, buddy. I got to head over this poker table. This guy's getting a little antsy around me right now. Win some money. Share it with me. Have fun. Happy New Year, Dean. All right, no problem, bro. Big, uh, big shout out to uh, Space Force Cycles and City Motorsports for donating those one pin. Also, Fly, Scott, all those guys definitely stepping in and helping out with the series. Right on. Yeah, we'll cover that. We'll cover all the sponsors here in just a little bit. But, hey, Dean, yeah. thank you for your time. Right, man, thank you for the, the game. 55 Tech Tip. Hey, everybody, everybody say bye to TJ. Bye. See you, bud. Bye. Right there, that is Dean Dias the third giving us all the inside information that he's got. we got to hang up on him. He's gone now. Cool. Giving us all his inside information coming from a former pro, a local superstar here, and the father of Dean Diaz. Yeah. Or the son of Dean Diaz. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and his, all his kids are just doing great. That shows you. Yeah, absolutely. And they're super fast. That's what I mean. It's like pedigree right there. Yeah, I'm telling you what. Damn. If you if you're a Dean Dias kid, or a Dias kid, you're like a, a natural born greyhound. You just go fast. That's right. Mr. DeLacy, welcome aboard. Raymond Burr, I've seen all your comments. Uh, Alex, I've seen your comments there. He will not be there to even watch Supercross. I agree with you. And Chuck Harris, the father of C Harris, C J Harris, on board Moto. I don't know where you went, but G Paul says hello. Oh, he's coming back. Okay. Well, it's just time that we're going to jump in. We're going to talk a little bit about AMA uh, permanent numbers this year, 2018. As you guys can see, I got some permanent numbers on here. A lot of them are uh, that you'll know, but there are going to be some shockers. Starting with number one, as we know, e uh, Eli Tomac won the Outdoor Series, so he will be number one in your Outdoor Series. Number three in your Supercross. Um, Zach Osborne, your 250 MX Outdoor Title winner, number one. Ryan Dungey, obviously he won the Supercross, retired, so he'll not be there. But Justin Hill, your 250 Supercross West Coast winner, um, will be running the number one. And Zach Osborne on your East Coast. Let's say hi to, there he goes. Chuck hi. Harris is watching. Hi. Say hi, G-Paw. Hi, G-Paw. Miss you guys too, Mr. DeLacy. Hope to see you at some of these winter rounds. Uh, Waldo's next weekend. It is super fun, great turnout. You guys would love it. And Waldo actually stepped up and put a lot of work into their track. Not that they don't ever step up because they always go above and beyond. But this past week, I mean, it kind of reached a lot definitely. of the track. Maintenance, prep, building stuff up. It looks to be super high. Callan says hi. Hi, Callan. What about me? I'm the host of the show. Can somebody say hi to me? Brandon Gibson says hi. That's Mr. Brandon with J3. Mono gets all the love. You going to say hi to Brandon? It's all about hi. Tawny. Yeah, all the love. No love for the dad. None. 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 Uh, Brandon Gibson jumped on. Reminds me to make tell you guys to check out J3Cleaner.com for the finest cleaner in the whole wide world. Can be shipped out to you. My boy uh, Dustin. Dustin came. Dustin's here. got me. Adam. Adam says hi, Moto. Hi. Matthew <laughs> says hi, CJ. What's up, Matt? <laughs> All right. So uh, Ryan Dungey retired. Jeremy Martin got number six. James Stewart still has number seven. Justin Brayton still with the number ten. Kyle Chisholm number eleven. Point Dog says, CJ is cool. Brandon Gibson also says, hi, Tawny. Hi. Teresa says, hi, Moto and CJ. <laughs> All right. Derek says, what's up, T? <laughs> the love for T. I got a shout out. <laughs> um, Jake Weimer with the number 12. Cole Dude. Seeley running the 14. Dean Wilson running the 15. Number 16, Zach Osborne. Uh, Joey Savacci with the number 17. Davey Millsaps, number 18. Number 19 is going to be Justin Bogle. Number 20 is going to be... Did you say tickle? No. You say tickle? Hold <laughs> up. That's the rule. That's the rule. If you say Brock tickle, you got to tickle. Yeah. yeah. Number one or number twenty-one, Jason Anderson. Number twenty-two, Chad Reed. Number twenty-three, Aaron Plessinger. Number twenty-four, Dylan Ferrandez. Number twenty-five, Marvin Muskin. Number twenty-six, Alex Martin. Here's the first change of the year. Number twenty-seven. Teresa. Number twenty-seven. No longer Nick Webb. Alex Martin. 
No, now no, it's going to no, be Malcolm, Malcolm Stewart. Stewart. Malcolm Stewart, Mookie coming through on that number 27. Uh, 28 is going to be Shane McElrath. Number 30 is going to be Mitchell Harrison. 31, Colt Nichols. 32, Christian Craig. 33, Josh Grant. The 34, Weston Pike. 35, Austin Forkner. 36, hometown boy, R.J. Hampshire, right here yeah. out of Florida. 37, Frederick Norton. 38, Luke Reslin. Uh, you guys caught the last show. Luke Reslin was on with us. Not only... But Dave Freeze, you're all right, even though you ride a Cowie. Oh, man. Mm. David's okay. Eli can win mm. on a Cowie. Brandon yeah. Peavy. What's up, buddy? Eli wins on a Cowie, Moto said. Uh, Luke Greslin, one of the funniest guys you've ever met. Really? Oh, my God. He is going to, uh, we got to get him back on. 39, Kyle Cunningham. 40, Chase Sexton. Uh, retired now, 41, Trey Kennard, although it's permanent number. 30, 42, Dakota Alex. 43, Sean Cantrell. The 44, Lorenzo Lucrucio. The 45, Jordan Smith. 46, Justin Hill. New permanent number for him. Wow. 47, Jamie Dakotas. 48, Henry Miller. 49, Nick Gaines. The 50, Dan Reardon. Who's that? 51. Come on, buddy. Who's number 51? You don't know? All right, we'll come back to it. 52, Mitchell Oldenburg. The 53 of Bradley, Bradley Taft. The 54, Phil Nicoletti. The 55, Vince Freeze. And uh, we're not going to go Bobby through Williams. all these. Big Bobby Williams yes. on there. Justin Starling out there with 68. Another Florida D-Land boy. Yeah. Do you remember who 51 is now? Yeah. You don't remember who 51 is? <laughs> Who's one of your favorite riders? Not Eli. Okay. Well, then we can't tell them. All right. Um, Justin Martin now. Yes. <laughs> How about another permanent number going to 92? Another Florida boy out there, Adam Cincerilla, coming in with a permanent number at 92, going old school there. Joey Crown, number 95 uh, this That's year. That's Lightning Queen number. That is Lightning Queen's number. So Jeffrey, those, he lost one. Yeah. So those are going to be your new two-digit numbers for 2018. Yep. Dean Dye is 92 right there for Adam. What you going to say, bud? We're done for sure. Done with that? No, we're doing this. We're going to do this? Yeah, we got a lot to talk about still. Okay, we yep, we're going to talk about this in just a second. What I wanted to talk about... Is the Florida series the coming up? Not the winter series, yeah. but the uh, Florida Motocross series getting ready to kick off. Going to be in collaboration with some joint races again with the Florida Georgia Championship. And uh, cool news with the Florida Georgia Championship: you, me, and mommy just took over in 2018, and we'll be running that series, right? Yep. That's pretty cool. We're going to um, jump down to down the right back. Mm-hmm. Um, give you guys a lot of some backside of what's been going on in local Florida. I got to give a shout out to all the track owners. Um, well, some majority of the track owners stepping up and working together to make a better racing environment for all you Florida motocross racers. So uh, the series promoters have came together. We built a pretty nice schedule, not released yet, uh, waiting on a few final kinks to come out. But it doesn't look like we'll be racing on top of any races, um, which is super, super cool. Uh, it gives you guys bigger gate drops. It helps make more of the tracks more sustainable. That way they're not going to be closing down to give you guys riders in the state of Florida better places to go. Yeah. Uh, as well as Dean stepping up with the Florida Winter Series. So we're looking really, really to that. Uh, I've been working in the back stuff with Boss Series. Some of you guys heard of the Boss Series. Normally in South Georgia, North Florida. But we've, uh, we've stepped up. We've came together. And it looks like we're actually going to do uh, maybe two to three joint races with the boss series and hopefully it works out if all the things come together it will be two to three joint races with the boss series and the florida georgia and the florida so you want to talk about stack gates we're bringing motocross racing <clears throat> back to florida yeah yes you like a bunch of people in your class don't you yeah it's no fun showing up at a track when there's only one person to race so 
Not um, fun. Not fun. Mark's your thoughts on A1 track design. Mark, that's a great question. I want you to think about that for just a second because we're going to talk a little bit about what Feld Motorsports is trying to do this year. So they're what they're going to T is you've been watching motocross for a while. Eh? Oh yeah. All right. So they're going to try to tell a story with each track this year at each venue. Yeah. So they go to a Anaheim one and they're it's going to resemble a race in the past supposedly. Now, I consider myself a motocross junkie, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to do some research and go back and dig up and start looking at some of these old tracks. Um, and not just my old favorite races, because right. I'm good at going back and looking at my old favorite races, but I'm going to have to go back and look at some of the tracks to realize what they're trying to do. I don't know if it's going to work, but what they said is they're going to tell a story at each different race about that venue and the previous motocross or supercross races there. Well, you think about it, you know, it adds a new aspect so you can see the first race and then that's when I'll do my research because then I'll go back and look at the races they're trying to emulate or bring back to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the fun part, merging the old with the new, see what happens. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be super cool, and I, I love it. So it's going to be uh, more people on the gate equals more fun for spectators. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, it, it's going to be real cool. So a big shout-out to Feld Motorsports. So going to Mark's question, Anaheim 1, I think it's a pretty cool track. Um, as always, it kind of looks a little basic on, on the track map, but I say that with the most up respect because I couldn't probably do two jumps out there. Um, you could hit two jumps. I could hit two jumps and then the third one I go to the hospital. Well, you, you broke your leg at WW. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> Turkey. Um, Booyah, man. So, it, it's going to be pretty cool. I do like the off camber, or well, I guess it would be an off corner double. I believe it's kind of right before a rhythm section. I, I don't know if the outside line, if they can bank it and jump in a corner, would be the fastest line where the inside tight line is going to be. It looks like there's a possible quad, the second rhythm section in. It's going to be a onto a table. But I believe if they go over the table, they'll be able to quad into that rhythm section. Again, track maps change, so I, I don't know. But I do kind of like the way the track looks. It looks like it's going to flow and have fun. Um, hopefully it just lends to some great race in action, and that's what we're all here for. Matthew Brown said, don't forget yeah, that was a flaggers are uniting together, bringing safety back to all the tracks. We'll have us. Absolutely. We had a pretty cool thing unite. The flaggers came up, and they've uh, started working together to try to bring more flaggers that we know to the track. It's been working out pretty cool, so big shout-out to all you guys out there keeping us safe. Um, so, And then we're going to have a couple things going down. With Phil, since we're on this subject, we're going to have a different format this year. The points are going to change a little bit. So you guys make sure you check out Feld Entertainment um, for some points structure changing, as well as a three-round triple crown shootout. Three-round triple crown shootout. Yeah. And we're not talking about Crown Royal, are we? No. No. We're talking about Monster Energy Supercross. Yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen is already the, the semis have been dropped from the 450 classes now. So there won't be any more semis. So just like in the 250 class, the top nine are gonna go straight to the main, then you'll have your LCQ. Uh, whereas last year we had the 450s had heat races, then semi, which four out of the heat, four out of the semi, went into the main, and then you had your LCQ. Not anymore, we're gonna drop that. The triple crown, there's gonna be three main events that night. No heat races. No qualifying. I guess qualifying practice, but you'll have three main events for that night. Yep. Pretty cool. That's gonna be great. I think. I think I, so. I'm looking forward to it. More racing action. Yes. And more, that's what we more want. More racing. That's it. full gates and let's go. That's it. That's what we're talking about, baby. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. What do you guys think of the new format? Let us know. Uh, Teresa Deer says, yeah. "Thank you, CJ. We do try our team as a team to do our best." Um, we appreciate it. So let us know what you guys think about the new format, as well as we want to see who you think is going to win the championship, 450, 250. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Fantasy Supercross here in a little bit. But I do want to bring Theron Moss in uh, studio with me. And uh, he brought in a special prize for us, a special present, something that he's been working on for us. Uh, T, I, I got to get a little background information on you. How did you get into photography? <coughs> Well, you can probably thank Brian Christensen for that. We were we went down one day 
to PAX and I had my new camera and started shooting motocross a little over six years ago and it started from there. Um, had a blast that day. Got addicted. It was it was love ever since. And that's all she wrote? That was all she wrote. Well, we appreciate what you do and I mean um, you know, you're one at the tracks every weekend. There's probably about 15 to 20 different photographers, and I love, I got love for all of them out there. Uh, but, you know, we became friends over the, the past, uh, the past few years, and you took a sick picture for us over at WW of my little man, Mono Harris. And I don't know if you guys could see it, and maybe, uh... Not be too bright, but... Tom, how's it look in the camera there on the... There you go. So this picture is really cool. This is one T took and I really fell in love with it. And I reached out to him, I said, hey, I want to get a poster of it so we can hang it on our wall. So what he did is he went to one of his uh, print shops. You want to give him a shout out? Uh, this is uh, Gallery 725 and this is the new uh, metal paper, metal ink. And if, if you really saw this up close, you would freak out because the colors are just outstanding, especially on a, a picture this size. So I really can't wait till CJ and Moto and Tony get this home on the wall and framed up and, and looking beautiful. Yeah, I will tell you, so you really can't see in there, but take like the exhaust. And I got to give a, another big shout out to Emmett Lindeby and Aaron Lindeby because this is actually a bike they let us borrow. This isn't even Moto's PW. Um, yeah. But if you look at the, the FMF exhaust here in this picture, it looks like a real exhaust. I mean, it's so chrome. It's so shiny. So... You guys make sure you ask me to check it out. That PW feel much, much more faster. Yeah? Thank you, Not faster than your new PW. The new one's fast. T, dude, I got to, I mean, thank you so much. You gave oh, no. me this is... a million pictures as well. You know, T's in the studio with me tonight, so I got to give him much, much love. But big deal, um, WFO, there, every photographer out there has been so nice to me and gave me pictures. I don't know. I think Poy Dogs even... Yeah. Took a sick shot of me. Oh, yeah, he, um, he is. So, you know, without you photographers, we wouldn't be able to keep the memories that last a lifetime. So thank you guys for what you're doing. And honestly, you put your lives on the line more than we do as racers. Yeah. I've been tagged a couple times. Not hard, but just mm. up close. So mm. You got goal hands like this. Well, if you don't, you don't get in close, you don't get the shots we get. Uh, absolutely. Okay. It's like that berm shot I got with the, the dirt flying everywhere. Oh. I got covered in rocks and everything. But you know what? Well worth a photo. Absolutely. Those are the ones I get for you. I like it. I like <laughs> it. And you can find those on Motocross Porn. Yeah, that's on Motocross Porn. We put a lot of stuff up there. Florida Motocross yeah, Group. Yeah, thank you guys. You know what? They're another group. I know. Florida Motocross Group, a super cool group of guys in the state of Florida. Um, and they do give a lot of shout out. You know, they have a, and they don't use the same photographer, which is cool. They rotate photographers, have a special photographer come in, take pictures of their ride days. And then, uh, they do raffles and all kind of stuff that go back to the, the photographers. It's, it's a great experience, and we really appreciate what they do for us. Yeah. I mean, it's fun because you get to go to different parts of the state, and it's just a great group of people. I mean, that's one of the things I love more about motocross than anything is, is the family, the love, and how, you know, it's just the sincere kindness from everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's unbelievable. So, uh... I gotta also give a Florida Motocross Group another shout out. As I was talking about track owners, promoters coming together, um, you know they're part of that. They're they're yeah. they're a promoter with the FMG Ride Day, and they take that in consideration. You know, not to take away from the the Florida racing, they want to give another avenue to riding for Florida guys. Uh, so they've reached out. They actually are working with all the track owners and promoters to try to schedule the best time around uh, to give you a ride day if you don't want to race. Um, but you don't have to choose. You know, what we're trying to do in the state of Florida now is to make it where you don't have to choose where to go race every weekend because it's no fun for nobody. So there will be one or two races, you know, in the state of Florida, and one maybe three and a half hours away. So if you live down there, that's the one you should race. If you live up here, that's the one you should race. But other than that, those are going to be the only races you go to. Very simple. And yeah. it's a win-win for everybody. I think the one thing I've seen this year compared to years past is, like you said, there, there's too many, there was too much overlapping. And this year, I see a real, you know, structured race schedule. Yeah. So there's going to be more riders. It's going to be more fun. And, and, you know, FMG doing what they're doing, it's incredible just for the sport itself. It is. And, and that's showing the, the Florida motocross 
community as a whole coming together, which I love to see. Uh, and you guys do too. I know everybody on this chat room with us and listen to the podcast loves it because it is a uh, it, it is a win win for everybody. Like I said, we're all passionate. We got into the sport because we love it. So to continue to grow and let kids like my son Moto, who's five years old now, grow up racing and seeing this environment, the family relationship we have at the track there's nothing better than that in my eyes and hopefully you guys see it as well um i, I actually do got to apologize because i kind of forget you know when we're here live in the studio we do a live broadcast we get to communicate back and forth but we just held a picture up and it's going to be on a podcast so that you guys listen to the podcast uh just take our word for it. The picture's pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I didn't really think it's about that. Glaring, <laughs> shining. As we, it's so pretty. We held it up for like five minutes. The podcast people are going to be like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Speaking of podcasts, don't forget you can check us out at iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher Radio. All the hot spots. Download. Make sure you tune in every week. Uh, there will be media. Whether you're a groomer like Mike out there taking care of Orlando MX, you can put some... Headphones in and listen to the track. So somebody else you might have heard. You ever heard of Grinding Mex? Oh, yeah. I know those guys. You know those guys? <laughs> yeah, those oh, guys. I don't know if you should say that out loud. Oh, come on, man. I shoot for that fool. Oh, man. <laughs> GrindMX.com, a, uh, a super cool friend of ours and somebody that supports the show. So we do a Grind MX. Normally, we pick a Grind Rider of the Week. Well, since it's 2018, the season hasn't started. We don't have a Grind Rider of the Week, but we still want to give them a shout-out. So, uh... Is it Jack, uh, Jack, how do you, Jack, Jacqueline? Not Jacqueline. Jacqueline? Who writes a lot? I should have. Oh, you're talking about Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah. Jacqueline on Grind MX. She wrote a really cool column, and uh, you guys want to go check it out over at Grind MX, along with some of the dopest photos coming from uh, Jim Armagast, Jacqueline, a lot of freelance guys around the country, and this joker sitting next to me right here, Mr. T himself. But check out this little thing she wrote. Some highlights about 2018. So uh, right there it is, GrindMX.com. 2018, Rocks and Returns. RD is retired, and Reed is back from Supercross. There's no denying that a comeback story from Roxon is devastating injury. Take center stage from A1 approaches. All eyes will be on the HRC Honda rider at the first gate drop. Ryan Dungey's Ryan retirement in 2017 Supercross marks the end of an era. His three back-to-back -back Supercross championships allotted him to retire on a high note at the peak of his success. With forward to seeing him uh, commentate with the series for 2018 and beyond. Now, which leads me into a, another thought process. You know, can Eli win this series pretty easily now that the diesel is gone? The consistent podium. 2017, he finished 50 points, 54 points ahead of uh, Marvin Muskin. He was in third. Yeah, but you're talking two different outdoor to indoor. Yeah, how did he do in the Supercross? Yeah. He didn't do 54 that. points ahead of Marvin Muskin in the, in the Supercross. Yeah, but Eli Tomac was the second. If you guys remember, he almost won it if uh, Ryan Dungey... But he wasn't consistent. Right, but Dungey is. So, does he have a chance? I, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. Everybody's know. got a chance. But he's got a big chance. But Muskin, just, I, I think, I, he's, I'm not a favorite of his, but or he's not a favorite of mine. But I just think you he, better not. I'll take your Kawasaki away. I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm going to go with the Kawasaki rider. That's right. Yeah, that's just the way it is. That's my rider. That's your rider, Eli Tomac. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Right. T. So, two, 2018, again from uh, Jacqueline's. Post right here. 2018, we'll see Barsha with a six race deal for Monster Energy. Um, niche Yamaha factory race alongside teammate Cooper Webb. He will be filling in for the injured Davey Millsaps. Barsha comes off a full privateer ride in, at 2017 Monster Energy Cup. We're looking forward to seeing how he does back on the Yamaha. Matthew Brown says it only makes sense that we all pull together as one family that includes photographers, flaggers, owners, riders, and their families. I love it, Matt. Yep. Yeah. Zach, our Marvin Muskin extends his contract with Red Bull KTM through 2019, proves to be a title contender, especially after his dominating performance at the Monster Energy Cup, taking home the Monster Million. Zach Osborne, who had a very impressive 2017 winning championship and the 2015 class, both in Supercross and MX, will race, a 2050, race 250 for 2000 Supercross and then move, which I cannot wait, to the 450 for outdoors. Adam Censorilla, who proved 2017 he is a title contender, as well as in the 250 class. After taking third in the Motocross Championship, the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki has two-year extension in the lights class. Hopefully, he secures a championship. 
coming into the season fully healthy. He does stand a chance. Adam Cincerello running number 92. Tomac extends his contract with Monster Energy Kawasaki. There will be probably no other racer who wants to claim the 2018 Supercross than Eli Tomac. Yes. Nobody wants to bring him <laughs> Nobody wants to race him nobody, nobody wants to get on the track with him, Moto? Is that what you're saying? No. Scarred? Say they scarred? No, they're scared of Eli Tomac. They're scared. Well, since he won WW, he's going to change his number to one now. Well, no, he won't. He'll be number one in the outdoors. Number three still in Supercross. I didn't know that. Brent, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, man. Make yep. sure you share. Give us some love. Tell all your friends. Uh, you'll be hanging out and watching us every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. And then Wednesday night, if you guys like what we do, Toy Dog, our boy over there, NDA Action Sports, does a very, not, I shouldn't even say similar show. He does a talk show as well, covers a lot of the local racing. So you guys make sure you show some uh, Toy Dog love over there. Check out NDA Action Sports. Um, she goes on, I'm not going to give you spoil the whole article, but I want you guys to make sure you tune in to everything Grind MX does. And uh, shoot them a message, <coughs> tell them you like what they do. I know I truly like it. Let's talk, before we talk about team changes and how the setup is, because I want to jump into Fantasy Supercross. You ever play Fantasy Supercross? No, sir. Here on? No. Why not? No, I'm just not a fantasy player. Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm just, I'm not, you know. <laughs> Kathy, thank you. Fantasy Supercross, the best <sighs> thing going out. There's a bunch of leagues out there, so just make sure you get on one of them. Um, it doesn't matter, but I will tell you, if you guys want to play the funnest, we over at the Moto Stop Show, All Things Moto, you know, we have a Fantasy Supercross League, and it's very, very cool, very fun. Um, there's a lot of people that's on the chat room that's played it before. So you guys go ahead and tell us what you think. I'll give you a rundown of how it works. <coughs> um, if you want to join it or if you want to see what it's about, make sure you just reach out to me on social media or it's uh, the Moto Stop Fantasy Supercross League. Our... Uh, our executive director over there, I think, is trying to look it up. Maybe my beautiful wife will help him out. Huh? Oh. No fun. She'll have fun. But pretty much how our league goes, it's a $33 buy-in. That covers your entire Supercross series. Now, here's what you get for $33. You get to pick picks every week. The winner, we go on a point system. So you pick the top five in the 450. Class, mm -hmm. and then we do a bonus question. The bonus question will range from who will win the 250, who gets 12th in the 450 class. It's all over the board. So first place, if you get first place right, it's 10 points, 8, 6, uh, 4, and 2, all the way down. The bonus question is worth 5 points. So each week, whoever has the highest points or whoever has the highest points and puts their picks in first wins a $15 payback. So we pay out $15 every week, and then at the end of the year, as the series builds, the points build, whoever has the highest points at the end of the year gets a lump sum payout, and that depends on how many people we got, but uh, it's been anywhere from, you know, 150 to a couple hundred bucks. That's so, not bad. Not bad, and it keeps the racing fun. Yep. Because here's what happens a lot of times, I mean, unless you're just a <clears throat> true geek or nerd about motocross, supercross racing, as we are, and probably everybody on this podcast... But uh, it is, sometimes you watch Eli Tomac and that's all you watch. Yes. Fantasy League, when you pick some other guys, you tend to watch them and it makes it a little more fun and interesting. So if you guys like that, make sure you go over and check out the Fantasy Supercross League, um, the Motostop Fantasy Supercross League. We are getting some mad <laughs> loves, all kind of smiley faces, hearts, and all kind of. Aaron Lindeby, what's up? I don't know how long you've been on, but... Uh, Hopefully you heard I gave you guys a shout out earlier. If you didn't see, uh, make sure you go back and rewatch it because uh, we got a really cool picture. And thank you again for letting us use Emmett Spike at WW. It was super cool. Um, also, the Moto Raffle. If you guys like cool stuff, make sure you check out the Moto Raffle page. Super cool. Um, and that's pretty much what we got going on. Any questions on that, put it in there. We'll try to get to it. Now I want to break down some racing teams, the teams for 2018 for you guys. Honda HRC coming in with number 14, Cole Seeley, and the number 94, Ken Roxon. What you think, T? I like that. I'm going to be interested to see how Roxon does this year after that accident. I mean, it's going to be to see where he goes. 
and just see see if we can stay on the bike. You know? Mm-hmm. Kind of excited. That Honda team's loaded. It is. So on their press release, and I do apologize, I'm pretty sure it said uh, more than, I'm pretty sure he had more than 11. But right here it says 11 surgeries. And I, I got to give a shout out to RacerX Online is where I got my information. Pretty cool site. I pretty much check it every day. Um, so I love you guys over there at RacerX. And give me some info to talk about. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what Ken Roxon comes back from. Red Bull KTM, you got the number 20 of Brock. Tickle! <laughs> no, you're not tickling me. No, don't tickle me. <laughs> About time you stepped up. We have a rule in our house. Anytime anybody says Brock Tickle, <laughs> you have to get a tickle. Um, and then 25 of Marvin Muskin over there on that team as well. It's going to be a hot team as well. It's going to be some interesting racing. Rocky Mountain ATV MC KTM WPS team. We're going to start off with the number four of Blake Baggett, as well as the number 60 of Benny Bloss. That's going to wrap out that team. Your Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. The number 21 is going to be uh, Jason Anderson. Anderson signed a long-term deal 2015. Uh, rapid reaction long-term deals with the Bobby Hewitt lead LED Husqvarna team. And the number 15, Dean Wilson. Cool to see Dean Wilson getting a, a uh, ride right there. Mark, will we ever see JS7 on a Pro Moto gate again? Um, if you're talking about motocross, supercross, probably not. Like on a bike? No. He may walk down the sidelines. That probably won't happen either. Never mind. No. Um, I got a better one, Mark. Will we ever see James Stewart again, period? Like, at a grocery store? Can somebody, like, just get a photo at a grocery store? I mean, can he go out and, like, try to pull somebody over again and get arrested so at least we can get a mug shot? Give us something, JS7. Yeah. Something. Something. We ain't asking for much. I mean, get naked and run down the road. I don't give a shit. At least make the newspaper. We just need something. Um... What did I just do? Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. So the Auto Trader Yoshimir Suzuki team is going to come at you with number 19, Justin Vogel, and the number 34, Weston Pike. Uh, Pike re-signed re his offseason. Will make his fourth year with the team. Comfort level should be high, so looking for big things out of uh, Weston Pike. Monster Energy Kawasaki. The number three. Yeah. ET3. 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 It's Eli Tomac. <laughs> yeah, Eli Tomac is going to represent, be the lead rider, but don't forget about the 33, jo Josh Grant. Josh Grant's good. Oh, boy, he was on fire. He put in a solid season last year. So, uh, hopefully he comes through with that. Monster Energy, Niche Factory Yamaha. Well, that's a guy I'm going to be interested to see how he does this year. Coop? Yeah. Cooper Webb. Because uh, as we were both at the MXGP, yes, it didn't go over so well for no, him. No, no, he did not do well there. He did not. So uh, definitely interested, and I think everybody, whether it's in the community, uh, MX community or his posse, everybody wants to know how uh, Cooper Webb's going to do. Davey Millsaps, very unfortunate, as if you guys don't know, Davey Millsap has been plagued with energy, or with en energy. Um, with injuries, he probably has energy when he doesn't have injuries, but he's been plagued with um, injuries throughout his career, leaving him not to race majority of his races. So starting the 2018 off, he's out for the first six, re first six races, uh, and Justin Barsha will fill in the number 51, who, you know, didn't like the, the Yamaha last year, talked shit on the Yamaha, and now he's back on a Yamaha. Yeah. So, the Smart Top MCR Racing is going to come to you with the number 10, Justin Brayton, the number 12, Jake Weimer, and the number 55 of Vince Freeze. Something to note right here is that there's no 800 Michael Wesse. I think Michael Wesse is finally retired. I haven't seen or heard from him, so we'll step down. So. Um, we'll see what happens. 
The HEP Motorsports Suzuki, you got the number 33 of Kyle Cunningham, the 48 of Henry Miller, and the 181 of Dusty Pipes. The Nut Up LVN 100 Suzuki, you have the 58 of Matt Bachelia, the 72 of Josh Hansen, and then you got Team Tedder Monster Energy Lucas Oil KTM. You're going to have the number 90 of Dakota Tether. As it says right here, the number 7, James Stewart. Note, this is the release for the number 7, James Stewart. Note, no deal or news available on Stewart, but he did request that AMA hold his career number 7 for another year. Hmm. Interesting. Just leading us on. Yep. Leading us on. I'm going to call him No Show. No show. Just no show. Yeah, no show. How about Chad Reed? Chad Reed hurt in the offseason. Um, coming in. Looks like he's going to try to race Anaheim 1, but still not sure if he's going to. And looks like he's doing his own deal. Now, I know. Um, now that I said I know, I just went with a mind blank. He's, he's going to be out of a fun mover. I believe he's getting some help from what I can take from social media from Dustin Farthing up there in Atlanta, Georgia who used to own, um, have part ownership in Mountain Motorsports dealerships, now went to some different dealerships, starting a new one. Mm -hmm. I believe he's going to be partnership in helping Reed with his team. Uh, who else was part of that team? Don't know. Yep, don't know. Me neither. Um, Malcolm Stewart, or Chad Reed, going to be on a Husqvarna. And then Malcolm Stewart. We hear Malcolm is putting together a privateer deal riding Kawasaki. Jack Kawasaki is out of a local shop in uh, Florida where he got his bikes from. So big shout out to uh... Alex just said unless he's registered to be there. Okay, maybe he's just not listening under MCR. Maybe he's just racing a few races. Um, so let's bring this back up. Let's see what else we got to talk about. I think we pretty much covered all of it. CJ? Sir, we are officially at 914 views. That is a Moto Stop Show record. Yeah. 914 views on Facebook Live tonight, folks. Welcome to 2018. Hey, hashtag Brian Sheehan that's not even on here watching. Um, he doesn't have Facebook. Yeah, but Tiffany always is on here. Reed should be there. He was testing. Yeah, I know he's, t I know he's testing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's quite ready so riding and racing two different things, Alex, as you know, <laughs> as well as anybody. Uh, I'd love to see him there. We'll see how he does. Um, changes. We talked about that. <coughs> talked about that. Well, let's open it up. Open for him. Tom McGee, the professor. And he says, show rocks. Thank you. Um, the FMG, open for him. So whatever you guys want to talk about, let's go ahead and post it up. Florida Motocross Group says, glad to see the Motostop show back on. Much love to the Florida motocross community. Wishing everyone a safe and fun uh, year. Absolutely. Back to you guys as well. Um, 2018 is going to be an amazing year for the Florida racing riding community. Uh, Brian Douglas says, TDOG, what's your favorite? Oh. What's my favorite track to film? You mean to take pictures? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't film. He's got a camera. That would be, I have three favorite tracks. And that would be Gatorback, Reddick, and WW. And WW aesthetically is the best track to shoot on, without a doubt. Because you can get so many different lines and so many different angles. And you know that from being out there. And we shoot together. Mm -hmm. So I love WW. That's, that is, that's it. WW! I feel like we are super gangster right now. Uh, big shout out to Junior. Yes. Um, getting everything Lisa? ready. Lisa. Absolutely. Jacob. How good is Jacob riding now? I think Lisa and Jacob probably run that, and Junior just is a pretty face behind it. He is. He is. <laughs> you ever seen him out there in that tractor? He just puts it on auto. Let's the computer do all the work. <laughs> so, funny story. I've, uh, I've, I've talked to Junior about three or four times this weekend on the phone, and literally he's been in the dozer every, every time, time I've talked to him. And so I say, you know, I hate to bother Junior, you got time to talk. He said, yeah, I'm on the dozer, you're on Bluetooth, and we're good to go. We can talk all day long. <laughs> and we will have an hour-long conversation. And uh, He's, he does. So Alex says, give us a sneak peek of the Florida MX Series tracks, please. Um, 
the Florida series or the Florida Georgia? I can only speak on behalf of the Florida Georgia, Alex. So I will tell you the Florida Georgia. Um, so it will be Orlando, probably PAX, probably WW, probably Sunshine State, probably Reddick, yes. probably a Bostwick. Probably Waldo, probably Dade City, probably there's too many tracks in the state of Florida right now to put them all in a series. So we will, uh, we will do our best to get them all in there. Yeah, Tom, did you make it? Tom, you didn't make it out to Sunshine last series, did you? Yes, you did. Absolutely. You were there. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, Sunshine was a... Black. Super cool track, and we can't wait to get back there. Uh, Mr. Wade up there, and the whole Sunshine crew, um, including the Canfields, Marty Canfield up there doing a phenomenal job. So we can't wait to get back there, as well as all the tracks. I'll tell you, we haven't been to a bad track in a long time. There's no such thing as a bad track. Yeah, that's not got me, but you know what I'm saying for ours. <laughs> <laughs> for our tracks. I mean, I have heard... Um, Hard Rock is getting better. <laughs> better? Yeah. That's well, why they call it Hard Rock. Mm, <laughs> it is. True story. Keep an eye on your bike. <laughs> Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr says Tampa. Um, I would imagine Tampa will be in the Florida series. Uh, I would love to do something with Mike Floyd, but I just think it's a little far for the Florida Georgia. You know, although Sunshine's not much closer, but I feel like that demographic over there um, with the Florida and – We'll let them kind of have that track. Dave Freeze. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, it's Dave. Dave, last year's winner of the Moto Stop Fantasy. Probably got so much money, he took off for the next year. Um, That's what I heard. Yeah. He was just gone. He took off for about four months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, in all seriousness, he did win the last year's Moto Stop Fantasy League. So, uh, But we got to give him a shout out. Went up to uh, Pennsylvania, man, racing the woods race. And I told him, I tell him, the trees don't move. People don't listen. <laughs> well, Dave hit a tree. And uh, if you guys, I don't know if you follow him on Facebook, but, dude, he's got a gnarly spin. I think almost 30 days or maybe more in the hospital. Um, but I don't know, Bostwick's in it. I don't know why you're giving me that face. I asked him what his favorite track was. Oh. Um, it's a, so, a Dave, uh, I mean, has a gnarly gnarly scar something one of the craziest injuries i've ever seen the craziest thing he rode off the track and i mean he he wasn't gonna go to the hospital but went to the hospital and ended up with, i think 30 days or maybe more so dave we're glad you're back in florida glad to see you race he raced a christmas race wasn't supposed to but he raced a christmas race at uh orlando so i did you raced it too yep what are you looking forward to racing moto Boswick's your favorite track? Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah, Did you it? rip it. Yeah, but, but Boswick's my favorite track because it doesn't get any ruts. It doesn't get any ruts? You were doing good in the ruts the other day. I know, but. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this thing up. So, uh, unless you guys got something else out there you want to talk about, we appreciate you hanging out with us. It's been over an hour. We went about an hour and 15 minutes. To, you know, when I first started these things. I'll never forget. <laughs> it was, uh, we we at first said we we're going to do like 10 minute shows. <laughs> 10 minute shows. <laughs> and so I got up here and I started talking. And uh, an hour later, Moto Tom, Mr. Tom McGee says, What's up? Hi. Yeah, well, no, it was like two hours. And they're like, Oh, our cameras run out of film. We're done. Yeah, we had to shut off. I don't need them. So, um, yeah, you were talking to no one for the last hour, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like I still do. I've been talking to nobody for the last hour and a half still. Um, but I, I do really, true appreciate Theron Moss coming in, sir. I appreciate it's always you a pleasure to see you at the track. Me? You guys, make sure you check out his photography. How can they see your work? Well, on Instagram, Facebook, and then pretty soon here in the next couple of weeks, it'll be on my website. It'll be up and running. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, Breaking news. Dog dog. Is that going to be Theron Moss Photography? Yes, it will be. That's how you can find him on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Are you, yeah, you're on Facebook. 
Yes. Um, and if you, you don't know them, just make sure you go to mine and I've tagged them today so you can find them very easily. Uh, make sure you go give them a like. Say thank you for uh, joining the show. Give us insight. So, WW, your favorite um, track to shoot with? What, what do you shoot with? What kind of ammunition weapons are you using over there? Can't. Is that the right lingo for photography? I'm, it doesn't matter. You can say anything you want. I'm, we understand. The group here understands. I'm a photographer on the download. Yeah, no. Oh, no, you sent me photos, remember? I did. You sent me photos every once in a while ago. What do you think? Those are taken with the special 25. iPhone, yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> See, I'm sorry. Samsung. Uh, listen to Brian. Nikon is better. Sorry, dog. Canon 1DX. I have a Canon. Hold on. Mini Deal Production has a Canon, so slow your roll over there. <laughs> you can check. Just because i got to give you hinters on what lenses to get, Brian. Come on. Oh! Shots fired right now, and I'm not talking about with the camera. And then we did a tutorial tonight on editing. So we're going to start with Brian, and we're going to take him to the water, and hopefully he'll drink. You know, we'll get him in. Get him to the I'm kind of thirsty. We'll get you to the dark side, okay? I'm kind of thirsty. Yeah, that's my boy. So Cannon. It's all good. And then a 7200 lens is my okay. favorite. Okay. Um, I just, I love my setup, uh, you know, and I try and shoot as much as possible. And I either, it's like I was telling somebody the other day, and you tonight. Shoot, edit, shoot, edit, shoot, edit, and you'll discover your, what you have. Yeah, I ask that not because I re really care. But I know there was Poi Dog and some other photographers on here, so you guys could nerd out because I have no clue what the hell you just said. I, I, I know, I know, it's all good. But and Liv Ruthless is out there. Come on, that's that's Mama Ruthless. I know, I know it is. Liv Ruthless hey, is Mom. not. Liv Ruthless is not ruthless. He's probably in bed sleeping right now. <laughs> but Mama Ruthless, who is the true ruthless one, <laughs> is representing. Florida Winter Motocross Special hats and shirts, fifteen dollars at the Liv Ruthless tent. You can't do that. That's that's just that's. That's ridiculously low. I love it. Steve, the hand is doing well. Look at this. Um, a little sore still. Alex, still but, uh, film photography. Yeah, it's not bad. I um, those of you guys don't know I messed my hand up pretty bad Sunday, but it's super sore. But all the shooting pains have gone away, so we're looking like we could ride sometime soon. Um, Dean, welcome to the show. You're a little late, even though you were on here earlier. <laughs> That's Dean Dias. Dean left. He came back. We're gone. Yeah. <laughs> we're wrapping up the show, Dean. We're, this is just bullshit hour right now. Good, um, to, good to see you, Double D. But don't yeah, forget. Like... Yeah, tell him. That's D little Dean. That's little Dean right there. Yeah. You want to talk to him? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, little Dean on the show tonight. Uh, we appreciate him and Die 55 Rider Tip of the Week. Don't forget, next weekend, Waldo Motorsports is a place to be. Um, unfortunately, the Motostop trailer will not be there. We have a prior engagement, like my real job I have to go work at. Um, so if you do need anything, make sure you get a hold of Tawny. She will get it out to you ASAP, um, hopefully ship to you before the race. And Ask Raymond, you'll have it Thursday. Raymond, you'll have your stuff Thursday. What would you get him? He needed a chain slide. Oh, Raymond, you'll have your chain slide Thursday, the wife just said. So, yeah, we won't be there, but make sure you guys go support uh, John at Waldo. I talked to him a few times today, and he is looking super uh, forward to this race, um, as well as everybody else. Don't forget the Fantasy League at Moto Stop on Facebook. It's the Moto Stop Fantasy SX League. Also, check out the Moto Raffle. Give us all a like. We do this stuff for you guys. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy it. And um, anything else? I think that's it. Moto, anything else? No? Yes. Yeah, we already read all that. All gone. All gone. Done, bro. Done. Done. You didn't do that. Hey, you need to give Bobby Williams a shout out. Thanks, Bobby. All right, it's been fun. It's been real. My name is CJ Harris, the host to get you the most. Peace out. Yeah. You did. We're off. <laughs>